we are in a series, and the series uh, is from the book of Proverbs, exploring the Proverbs, and every single week will be a new uh, theme, a new focus, and you remember that Proverbs was written by this King Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived, and he was writing this to instruct wisdom to his children because he loved them so much. Living with wisdom. When I was 15 years old, it was summertime, and I was kind of bored. And a friend and I had a crazy idea. Now, you know, when 15 year old boys are just kind of like bored, they can do some weird stuff. So, I lived out in the country, and he lived in an area that had a large field and a fence in the back, and if you climb over the fence, you keep walking and you go to some woods. So, what we did was this. We said, we are going to build a little like a cabin in the woods, you know, just like a fort house or whatever it might be, or a tree house. So, his dad had a big axe. So, this pretend, I, I, I could have probably got an axe, but I didn't want to scare anybody today. <laughs> this is an axe. Now, the axe that we got was not a little axe, it was a very, very big axe. I mean, it was large. Okay, it came up to part of my waist. So picture this as a large axe. So there we were on this August day, out in the woods, sweating, and we were cutting down some little trees and trying to make this little house, this fort kind of thing. Well, my friend got bored, and he left and went home. And I just kind of like, eh, you know, I'll just, I'll do it. So I got the axe out, and I kept chopping. And I'll never forget it. I take a big swing and I come down on the, the tree, but instead of hitting the tree solid, like this is the front of the axe, I glanced at the tree and the axe came right at my leg. I mean, I was like in full swing. And as, I don't even know how it happened, but as the axe was coming at my leg, for some reason I twitched and the axe hit me broadside. It didn't like go straight in, but it hit me broadside. It hurt like crazy. But it made me think. God really got my attention. I was out there all by myself, about a quarter mile from civilization, having to climb over a fence. Could I do that with a 25 pound axe sticking in my leg? I don't know if I could have done it at all. Would I, I was thinking all these thoughts, would I have passed out and just bled to death right in the field? I couldn't holler to anybody. No one's going to hear me from that far out. But God got my attention. Sad to say that, you know, with the passing of time, I kind of forgot. And finally, when I was 17, he got my attention again. But what I want to talk to you today is about is the question, will we get it? Will we get it? The message entitled today is, do we get it? The book of Proverbs, chapter number 1, verses 20 to 33, talks about how we can get it and how we can miss it. So here it is. Are you ready? Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, I have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, 
I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. When terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But, but, would you read it with me? Whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. Can you say amen at the reading of God's word? Amen. So what I want to share with you, what God's put upon my heart, is this simple truth that wisdom wants you. Now how do we know wisdom wants us? And what do we need to know about this wisdom? First of all, we need to see that wisdom shouts out for us. Wisdom wants us. You know, God's desire is that we lead a wise life, that we have a blessed life. Verses 20 and 21, we see this crying out. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. And at the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. So wisdom tries to get our attention. It's personified as a woman in the street hollering out to people who go by. How many of you have ever been to Times Square in New York City? Last time I was at Times Square with the young people here, I remember a man in particular who was, uh, you know, crying out at Times Square. Now, Times Square, when you're walking along some of the streets there, it's sort of like downtown Philadelphia, but kind of multiplied by three. You have just huge groups on the sidewalk, you know, some six to ten deep. Uh, it's just very, very crowded. And so this man is crying out for attention. And most people aren't even listening to him. And I would say the same thing about me. Because I just paid him a little bit of attention and I realized that he's just trying to sell me to, uh, something to go to a show and I'm not interested. So I just walk by as most others do. But what we don't want to do is walk by wisdom. There's something about wisdom that we need. We see from these verses that wisdom, God's wisdom, is out in the open. Now, there are some aspects of God's wisdom that are hidden, but God doesn't make it hard for us. God doesn't take his wisdom and put it in a safe where we have to know the combination. You know, one of the uh, neat neat things about this church is some of the older items that are in this church. And there is a safe that is in this church through those doors that probably weighs about a ton, over a ton. And the safe has, the, the door is like about at least like eight inches solid steel. It is an amazing safe. And the safe requires not just like three numbers, but like I think there's like five or six, and you turn twice, and you turn three times this way. It is so complicated to get into that safe. It's, it's an amazing safe. There's little notches that are above the, the, the handle where someone actually tried to take a drill and get into it one time. And you can tell that they failed miserably. They only got about two or three inches in, and like an eight inch steel. Good luck with that. You're going to need a lot of dynamite. But, you know, I think of that. I think of God's wisdom. God did not say, well, 
you might find it, but you're going to have to look all over the earth for the code. No. He said, here it is. You can find wisdom if you look for it. Because it's there. It cries out in the streets. The Bible tells us that God's wisdom is available to all. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have a high IQ. You don't even have to know how to read. You can be a wise person. God calls us in many different ways, doesn't he? His wisdom comes at us in many different ways. I love to hear people's stories. And one lady was telling me her story. And she was saying, I was just living my life pretty much ignoring God. And she said, I started to feel like this sense of emptiness. And I, I started to look around at the trees and at the skies. And at night I would see the stars. And I just kept thinking to myself, this, this is an amazing planet. It could not have just happened. And as she thought these thoughts, she opened up herself to the call of wisdom. And she gave her life to Christ. You see, nature, God uses nature to call us, doesn't he? God uses the witness of others. Have any, anyone in your life, did you come to Christ uh, through someone else sharing Christ with you that was very instrumental? Well, that happened in my life. God used people with wisdom to speak into my life, even when I wasn't that open to it. God calls us through circumstances. Most people don't come to Christ until they're in the middle of a storm or they see their great need. But some people, God calls them in very random and you know weird circumstances. A good friend of mine was living kind of, a, he was living a foolish life. I mean, he was very talented. This was when he was young. He was in the Navy. He played on the Navy football team. And he just had everything going for him. He had had <clears throat> Christian grandparents that taught him the way, but he just, you know, was doing his own thing. But he tells the story of one day he was on a dance floor. Get this. And he was a very athletic guy. And he was just dancing, and everybody was cheering him on because they recognized how great he was in his athletics and dancing. And all of a sudden, as he was dancing on this dance floor, it's like God spoke into his spirit. And God said, why are you wasting your life like this? And he just stopped dancing and walked out. And he gave his life to God. And he was never the same. He was finally at peace and happy in his life. But God calls. Wisdom calls us in very different ways. There's a man that I know was studying for the ministry. He was in seminary with me. And, I, and he just looked like, you know, you think of Mr. Clean Cut. This guy was, you know, Mr. Rogers' brother. And he was just so like, and he told me he got saved while he was at a rock concert. And he was high on drugs. He was looking up at the rafters and he saw an angel. I would have really doubted that if I met him on the street. Okay, sure, buddy. You know, maybe you're on another drug right at the moment. But he was in seminary studying for ministry right sitting next to me. It's like, wow, okay, well, interesting. Wisdom called him, and he, he answered. So God calls us in many different ways. One of the primary ways God calls us is through his word. That's how God called me. You've been working on me, but it was through the preaching of the Word of God that God got a hold of my life. And I, I just had to ask myself the question, do I want to be a fool or do I want to follow God? Let's see, fool and follow God. Fool? I think I will give my life to Jesus and see where that goes. Hmm. Best decision that he ever helped me to make. So, God's wisdom is available. Aren't you glad for that? Yes. Amen. <clears throat> and his wisdom demands a response. Here's something else we need to know about God's wisdom. It's not just, well, you know, take it or leave it. You know, it's, 
it's not just, well, you can be neutral about it. It doesn't really matter. No, no. It matters, and it demands a response. Sad to say, in the world that we live, because our hearts are so deceitful, most people respond negatively to wisdom. And it's heartbreaking. Many of you are praying for loved ones, and you've been praying for them for a long time. And the tendency that we have is we procrastinate. Your loved ones might say, well, you know, I think what you're saying is true, and it's good. Maybe someday I'll follow. Maybe someday. And I remember even as a teenager, you know, giving into that deception. My thought was, well, you know, after I've lived my life and I'm older and I'm like, you know, wasted away and I've had all my fun in life, then I'll give my life to God. See, again, the deception is that our life will be somehow unhappy if we give our life to God. But if we live in the world and we just do everything that our little heart wants, then that's going to bring us much joy. We are deceived. And so the procrastination damns us. The Bible says, How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? And there are some people who look at wisdom and scoff and laugh. I'll never forget a guy who just thought of himself as so intelligent. And uh, he looked at me and he says, you really believe that there's like a daddy God up there who's going to take care of you? You really believe that there's a guy up there who's going to come back? And it's like, you know, on the clouds? It was like, he was just, his whole manner was like mocking and scoffing. All I could say was, well, you know what? You're going to die and I'm going to die. And then we'll find out who's right. But I try to share the gospel with them too. But who knows? There's people like that that when they get saved, man, they really get saved. Mm -hmm. Okay? But many people scoff and laugh. We have to expect it. The Bible says, How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing? Proverbs 1 22. And then there's many who also hate wisdom. The famous last words of many people in hell will be this, these words. Nobody is going to tell me how to live. Famous last words. Nobody is going to tell me what to do. How long will fools hate knowledge? Now that would be a sad uh, ending for scripture to read about wisdom, but even though most people reject God's wisdom, thank God for the people who respond to this lady who's standing in the street, you know, making a proclamation. There are those who stop and listen and respond. How do we respond? Verses 24, verse 23. There's two ways, basically, from the Proverbs that teach us what we respond, how we respond. One of them is that we respond to God's counsel. God gives us not just advice that, you know, if it seems okay for you, if you might want to try this, no. God gives us advice and counsel, which is truth, which will help us to avoid uh, darkness and destruction that will present us before God in His uh, grace. He gives us counsel. So the best thing we can do with wisdom's help is to respond to that counsel. Say, okay, Lord, I am listening. I want you to teach me. I want to grow. And the other way we respond is we respond to God's rebuke. 
Now this is where it gets really tricky because God, if he is God, he has every right to rebuke us. He has every right to correct us. And if you think that you're going to follow God and that you're still going to do it your way, it, it, it won't work. It doesn't work that way. It's always God's way. And he loves us, but he's not intimidated by us. And he'll correct us even if we threaten to walk away from him. You think that God is up there wringing his hands and saying, oh, I, I better not correct them because they, they might get mad at me and walk away. I mean, God loves us, but it doesn't make God any less God if we walk away from him. It just makes us less of a person. So God rebukes us. And would you give God the permission when God says to you, you know what, you're being a jerk right now. Or you know what, you're, you're doing evil. Or you need to change. Would you give God permission to say that you need to change? Would you give God permission that, to, to rebuke you? Because if you do, there's good things that will happen in your life. You'll grow, whereas you won't grow if you don't. The Bible says, if you turn at my reproof. Okay? So God's counsel and God's correction. That's the pathway of wisdom. And we need to know about wisdom. Number three, wisdom proclaims a consequence. There's a consequence to our choices. And listen to what the Bible says in verses 24 and 25. So wisdom is on the streets. She's in Times Square making this a great announcement here. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof or correction. So here's what wisdom is saying. Wisdom is saying, I am calling to you. Okay? I have stretched out my hands to you. I have something to give to you. I, wisdom, am willing to give you counsel. I'm willing to give you correction. But you don't want any of it. And so, since there's no neutral life, since everything in life has consequences, there are consequences if you respond to wisdom. Verse 23. There are good consequences. If you have a soft heart and you turn when God speaks to you, there's some amazing blessings coming your way. If you turn, here's what the Bible says, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Do you know what I have discovered in life? The most exciting thing in life, it comes from the presence of God. And what makes life worth living is the Spirit of God working in my life and the Word of God. Without those two things, life would be so empty. So God says, if you respond, if I respond to him, then he is going to pour out his spirit. So he said, I'll just go ahead and I'll give you. You want more of the Holy Spirit? Well, here's what we should do. We should turn when God speaks to us. We should listen to his counsel. And God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit to you. And my words are not just going to be words on a page, but I will make them known to you. In other words, you'll have insight that people in the world have, not, have no idea because God will unveil his words to your spirit. That's what wisdom does for us. If you respond, but 
if you don't respond to wisdom, there are some very, very scary words here. There are consequences if you reject wisdom. And I want you to take a look at that. I was at uh, Hahnemann Hospital uh, about a week ago, and as I was leaving the hospital, <coughs> there was a big crowd that was gathered. They had blocked off the street, and they were playing some music, and someone came on uh, with a microphone making this big announcement. I think that maybe Bernie Sanders was there that day. I'm not really sure, but <coughs> I had things to do and I talked to people from Hahnemann already, and they, they're just saying that it's pretty much a done deal. And so I didn't stop and listen. I just didn't pay much attention. Not that I was like negative about the meeting, but it just, it just didn't really interest me because I had somewhere else to go. Did I experience a bad consequence from that? No. It was just, you know, someone was calling out for people's attention and I was kind of on the outskirts of the crowd and I hopped on my bike and rode away. But you don't want to do that with wisdom. You don't want to just walk away because this is not Bernie Sanders here. This is God and his wisdom. If we reject, the Bible says, wisdom will laugh at you. Yeah. So, yeah, don't get out of control. <laughs> We, we, we timed that. That was bland. That was bland. So, now this might seem very cruel, right? Does it seem like, you know, like, are you saying, is the Bible saying that when you get down and out, that, you know, God's going to come along and just laugh at you? Not necessarily. But this is saying that if we're the kind of person who scoffs and laughs at God's wisdom and say, you know, that's just, I don't want anything to do with that, then wisdom will turn around, and when you go through your difficulties, wisdom is going to just look at you and say, okay, yeah, you're so great, you're so powerful, you know, you got it all together. You know? Help me out there. Okay. Wisdom is going to laugh at you. It's going to mock you because you mocked wisdom. All right? So don't do that. Don't mock wisdom. Okay, you guys still with me on the same channel? <laughs> okay, we're so glad he's here. This is a special little young man, little Lucas. All right? Here's the thing about life. You're going to go through storms. I'm going to go through storms. The person on the street who doesn't want anything to do with God is going to go through storms. So storms are common. They're just going to be part of life. But for the person who rejects wisdom, storms are going to overwhelm them. Because there's not going to be an ability to be able to handle the storms of life that are coming if you don't have wisdom. I remember a young man who had been in prison for about five years. He got out. While he was in prison, he just like had an amazing encounter with God. And he came out of prison. He was like a neon sign all lit up. I mean, he was just like on fire for God. Coming to our church, connecting with our men's group. He was just, he loved God. But he didn't exercise wisdom. So he got involved with a young lady. Uh, because he'd been in prison for five years and some young lady showed attention to him. Not someone from the church, but just someone. And he meets this young lady and two weeks later, he's living with her. And so we said to him, you know, the brothers and myself, hey, we love you and we know that you love God, but this is not, this is not wise for you to do this. This is not of God. But you know what? I can stay on fire for God and I can go ahead and you know, have my girlfriend and live with her at the same time. You know, who are you to challenge me on this? I can do this. And I just looked at him and I said, well, you might be on fire for God now, but you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose the fire and you're going to end up with problems just like you had before. 
He said, oh, no, 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 I would not do that. I would not, you know, I'm not going to go back into drugs. I'm not going to go back into drinking. I'm not going to be violent anymore. I know, I've learned those things. I said, well, it's the grace of God that helps you to do that. If you disobey God and you, you choose to reject Him and His wisdom, you're going to get right back. Oh, no, 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 I won't do that. Well, what happens is, eventually he starts to cool off in his faith. He pretty much leaves the church. You just see him every once in a while. It was so interesting. About two years later after this, someone from the church asked me to go to a courthouse to you know, to be with them as they were going through something. So I said, okay, then I would. And when you go to a courthouse, usually there's a lineup of court cases. It's not just you go there at 2 o'clock and they have theirs. You pretty much wait for a long time. So I'm in this courthouse. It's probably about three si times the size of this room. And, you know, person after person is coming up. And I'm just so shocked because I see this young man that we had talked to that started, had come out of prison and come to our church. I won't even give his name. But he was called up because of uh, violence and because of him abusing his girlfriend and drinking, just like he was living before. And I remember him just kind of like, he just kind of like had a tough attitude. He's just standing there, you know, in front of the court, and like, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. And then he sees me in the back of the courtroom, and I remember how stunned he looked. It's like, wow, what did you come in, just for me, or what? And I wish I could say a happy ending to this, but oh, you know, he just repented right there in the courtroom. I don't know what happened to him. He, he probably ended up going into prison after that. <clears throat> but all I'm saying is that even if we call ourselves Christians, and we say, oh, you know, I just love God, if we do things that are stupid, we also have stupid consequences, right? We're not immune from bad consequences just because we believe certain things. We have to live what we believe. Isn't that what wisdom is? Wisdom isn't just what you know. It's how you live. So, trouble will overwhelm. You'll eat the fruit of your ways. So what you go shopping for, you end up eating. So make sure that you shop with wisdom. What you bring into your spirit, what you bring into your home. Shop with wisdom. And the promise, verse 33, the last cha uh, verse of chapter 1. The promise is given. I love this promise. Whoever listens to me, that is wisdom, will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. So even though storms will come into your life, if you're going after God and you allow wisdom to talk to you, you're going to be secure. It's like, it's going to be okay. His peace will be with you. His power will get you through the storm. You're going to go through the waters, but they're not going to overflow you. You're going to go through the fire, but you won't be burned. Because God has you. He's got you. But you got to be wise. You have to go after wisdom. Wisdom wants you. Is that enough? That wisdom wants you? Do you want wisdom? If you want wisdom, God will give it to you. James chapter 1. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the, Lord, of the Lord, and he will give to all liberally. God bless you. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but you know, you guys want wisdom because you, you love Jesus and you obey him by gathering together on, on his day and you worship and you hear his word. But may God give us the grace. 
go after wisdom.